everybody and welcome back to Eat the World. Today we are going to be talking about foraging for chanterelle mushrooms. They are delicate and delicious and pretty expensive if you were, if you were to go out and buy them. Some people make a career of foraging for them. I absolutely adore them, so I decided to get my boots on and go out in the forest in search of these golden treasures. Before we get started, please take a second to hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. It makes such a difference. Also like and comment and this helps the YouTube algorithm know that this video should be shown around. So where do chanterelles grow? They require established woodland to grow. Chanterelles develop independent relationships with the trees called mycorrhizal relationships. These relationships take a while to establish, so they require a mature forest to grow. A forest that's been cut in the past few years won't have any chanterelles. So look for older trees and a solid forest canopy. They're most commonly found around maple, beech, poplar, birch, and oak trees in some areas. They're associated with pine and fir trees in other areas, so it doesn't have to be hardwood. In some areas, chanterelles require moist habitat, and they're most abundant in wet summers with consistent rain. Here in the Pacific Northwest, we had a dry summer with autumn. The rains have started and the chanterelles are starting to come out. Positively identifying chanterelle mushrooms takes a bit more work than just spotting a few orange mushrooms in the distance. Their bright color makes them easy to spot on the forest floor, but once you have a chanterelle candidate in your hand, be sure to verify that it's not a poisonous lookalike. So please make sure you double check with what you've picked before consuming. Also take a compass with you and make sure you don't get lost in the forest. It's easy to stare at the ground and lose your bearings. Keep your wits about you and if you're in bear or predator country, take some bear spray with you and don't go alone. I'll post a link below to my website where I'll have a lot more details of how to positively identify chanterelle mushrooms and how to get them. Okay, so out mushroom hunting and looking for chanterelles. I've got a stem there, that one looks like it's been picked, but there are definitely some chanterelles in here. Some there and there, but I'm gonna keep looking until I find the good ones. Um, but this is definitely, mushrooms are in here. I found a few here. Well, this is super cool. Oh, look at that. Look at this fellow. I'm gonna put this down for a sec. Check it out. I don't know why I'm whispering. Look at this. Amazing. So back at home, my friend who guided me on the mushroom hunt had some moose meat that had been harvested. So I thought a perfect representation of this part of the world would be a moose and freshly forged chanterelle stew with roasted local vegetables and sour cream dumplings. Now step one is to lightly flour the moose meat or whatever kind of meat you'd like to use and brown it off, making sure not to overcrowd the pan. Next step is to brown your mirepoix or your carrots and onions and celery or whatever you're using, you could put leeks in there as well. We're gonna add some fresh thyme and parsley stems and garlic to the meat. Then we're gonna add a tablespoon of tomato paste to the mirepoix and fry it off. Then we're gonna deglaze with about a cup and a half of red wine and make sure there are no burnt bins. This will make your stew bitter. Once that's done, add it to your meat and aromatics and top up with about a liter of beef stock and then about another liter of cold water and bring it to the boil and simmer. Next is time to prepare the garnish. So I had some nice young carrots, beetroot, shallots, parsnips, potatoes. I blanched the carrots and roasted all the other veggies and the potatoes will be cooked in the stew later on. Next I made some simple dumplings because who doesn't love dumplings? So flour, salt, parsley, baking powder, butter and sour cream. 
crumb in the butter and then mix in the sour cream gently together. Roll them into small golf balls and let them rest for later. In the meantime, check on the stew. If it's cooking quickly and the broth is running low, top it up with some more water. One very important step is to skim the scum off the top and get all, rid of all the extra fat and impurities. When the meat is almost tender, we're going to decant it. That is, we're going to strain it all and pick out the meat. We can then dispose of the aromatics in the mirepoix. Um, the reason we do this is so that we have a consistency in the cooked vegetables that comes into the stew afterwards. Um, a lot of stews, everything is a kind of mushy and slopped together. This is just a bit of more of a fancy way of doing it. Pour the sauce back over the meat and bring it to a simmer and add the potatoes. When the potatoes are almost cooked, add the roasted veggies. Give it a stir and let simmer for a bit. In the meantime, get out the cast iron pan and get it nice and hot with some clarified butter or vegetable oil. We're going to sear off the chanterelles. You want to make sure the pan is hot so you don't boil the mushrooms, but you want to make sure they develop their umami through the frying. Throw in a whole clove of crushed garlic for good measure, season it and let it cook down. When the mushrooms are done, add them to the stew. Then you can add your carrots and then you can give it a good stir and drop your dumpling balls on top. Cover them in stew and then put a lid on top and simmer them until they are cooked through by about five to 10 minutes. And then we are done and it's time to eat. What an absolute joy this meal is. So many levels of flavor that we've built up so much good stuff going on and it's just so nice that most of this was foraged or harvested from nature. The mousse was earthy and buttery as were the dumplings. The mushrooms were just so perfect to match this. Everything else was perfectly complimentary. This is a 10 out of the 10 for this amazing meal. You guys should really give it a try. If you haven't got mousse you can use beef or anything else you like. Even if you haven't got chanterelles just use another mushroom and enjoy such a spectacular dish. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, I shared a lot of fun hunting chanterelles and I'm not done yet. There's still plenty of them out there and I think the season's just kind of starting. Um, but in the meantime, I'm down here at the river, trying my luck at fly fishing and trying to land those river salmon. Um, so far, no luck, but they are here. You can see them jumping and people have caught some but I haven't. Anyways, thanks so much guys. Hey look, please, 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 please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, comment down below. Again, all of this, there's a reason for it. It really helps the YouTube algorithm pick up that this video is worth watching and they'll share it with other people and I'll get more views and more subscribers. Did you see that? It's out there. Anyways, so I gotta catch the salmon. I'll speak to you soon and thanks so much. Subscribe. Subscribe.